Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you to this service this Sunday. It's good to be in church, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we call this a sanctuary, and for good reason. Uh, this is a safe place to, uh, uh, to declare truths, our, our truths, the truths that we can at least discern from God. It's a, it's a blessing that we can be in, be in such a spot. Um, the world isn't always 
so safe uh, in that regard. And, uh, uh, but it is here, so we're blessed. Uh, this is the season of epiphany. Uh, it, is, it is the season for a new way of thinking. Uh, we are open to epiphanatic activity. Like that? Have you ever had, have you ever had in your life kind of in, a, in a brand new, kind of astounding insight? Maybe about yourself, maybe about others, maybe about God, maybe about the world. Uh, I think it's a beautiful thing that the church has reserved space, and indeed the Bible has reserved space for, for that to be an open subject that one of the things that can happen as a human being, especially in the, in the uh, company of God, is that it's possible to have new ideas, new insights, ep epiphanies. And if you think about uh, the major, all the major characters of the Bible nearly, they all either had to get to a place of an epiphany. Think about Noah. God says, I want you to build an ark in the middle of the desert because there's going to be a flood. He has to get to a place. He's got to get to a place of epiphany to say, hey, you know, I'm in the desert. You know, these are, these are normal people. They can see. Um, but I'm in the desert, but I, I've got a call from God, and I need to expand my mind, my thinking, in order to incorporate what God is doing. Think about uh, St. Paul, who was just absolutely given over to uh, the law of God, and as important as it, and as holy as that is, he had to make a, a big change in his life, going from law, as important as that is, and still embracing that, to grace and forgiveness. That's huge, right? Do you know people in your lives, I know a lot of people who are in the rooms over here, who have had epiphanies about themselves, their lives, uh, the trajectory of their lives uh, are, uh, some of them, altered significantly because they've gone into the rooms. Different, and they've had epiphany one after the next after the next. So uh, I think it's a real gift uh, for this season where we can look anew uh, at our lives and, uh, and then make appropriate changes. Here's one. I'll, I'll give you. And I've been thinking about this too. Uh, it's, it's easy for me, uh, maybe for you too, to look at the world and say, you know, it's, it's going to hell in a handbasket. I mean, especially after this week, right? But I've, I've felt that on and off uh, my whole adult life. Things aren't going to work out. Things aren't going to work out. But God comes to us and says, listen, I'm in charge of history writ large, and writ small, and I am going to get you to a place where you are whole, where humanity is whole. Now that's a tough thing to swallow and accept, but coming from God, it gives us an opportunity to have an epiphany about history. And then we can live into it. Then we live lives of hope. We live lives of forgiveness. We live lives of reconciliation. It gives us it gives us permission to live a new way uh, of thinking. And that is a great thing. That, that sort of thing is on tap for epiphany. And it's, it's beautiful. So it's uh, just been on my mind, and I hope it's been on yours too. And if not, it's something to consider. So welcome, everyone. Uh, let's sing the hymn uh, 288, uh, We Three Kings, one, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3.
But join me now uh, with our call to worship. It's from Psalm 72. Bind the leaders with justice and righteousness, O God. May they judge the people with righteousness and thy poor with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people. May the leaders defend the cause of the poor and deliver the needy and crush the oppressor. It's interesting, I write these, I write these uh, bulletins on Mondays usually. So uh, I never quite know how that's going to translate by the, by the Sunday, but it's, uh, I think, very apt for this day. And now our assurance of pardon and restoration. God delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. God has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, God redeems their life and precious is their blood in God's sight. And so, uh, as redeemed people, we greet one another in the name of Christ. And uh, some of us are very relieved that we don't have to get up and actually greet people. It's the least favorite part of the whole service. How many of you uh, agree with that? Um, so maybe this will make a change <laughs> uh, going forward. But uh, I've heard that many times from people. Yeah, I don't like the greeting, you know. But uh, that's what we do in the name of in the name of Christ.
Thank you, Dan. And that angelic voice that you're hearing uh, is uh, Louise Roller, who's cranking it out back there. It, I've said this before, that the Hebrew word for worship is the same for work. Uh, they're interchangeable and uh, uh, meaning in this environment that, uh, that uh, we work at it. We work at worship and uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's a devotion, but it's a, it's a practice, it's a work. And so Dan, you, you, every week you, you certainly uh, show us the way and Louise, you've been great this morning. It's time for our prayer of confession together. Let's pray. We confess we need more hope. We admit we miss gathering with our friends and our brothers and sisters in Christ. We acknowledge we need perseverance, patience, largesse of heart. Lord, you give all that is needful. You give light even in darkness. And we receive it. We receive you. We bless your commitment and steadfast love to us and to all peoples of the earth. Amen. summary of the law uh, taken from Isaiah 61. My people shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. We shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Send us love, send us 
prayers. Let us pray together. We bless you this day, O God, and we acknowledge that you are the Lord of history, uh, whether we can discern it uh, or not. We trust you to move human history forward to a redemptive end. This week, it's, uh, this past week, it's been difficult and challenging to affirm that, uh, we saw before our eyes uh, the unfolding of history that is uh, dark and frightening uh, to many of us. And we ask that you would be near us as individuals and also as a nation. We pray this day for uh, those who are grieving this day from the events of uh, this past week. Uh, there, are, there will be and are, have been burials and deaths and grieving uh, this week, and we pray for the families of the fallen. We pray this day also for, uh, as we do every, um, nearly every week, we pray for politicians and staff uh, who have been traumatized this week as well. Give them uh, stout hearts and clear minds and give them wisdom uh, as, they, as they move forward. We pray, O oh God, that uh, these events also would be cause for a greater sense of unity uh, in Washington and elsewhere, uh, that it would uh, be a clarion call to do better in terms of bipartisanship and friendship between the aisles. We pray this because the people need it. We pray that your spirit would abound that your truth would abound, and that uh, our, our nation would uh, find a new epiphany uh, for being in this time and this place. We offer our prayers also in gratitude for the many thousands who are giving their lives and risking their lives for our benefit, uh, for uh, nurses and doctors and technicians and custodians as we do every week. We pray for uh, those that run institutions during this harrowing time. We pray for churches this day uh, who are also struggling and challenged uh, to keep on uh, with the work of Christ in their location. Lord, we pray for those who uh, have endured and uh, another week of of uh, ill health uh, for those who have not survived the week uh, and those families that are grieving terribly. We pray for those who are exhausted uh, with care, uh, with uh, professional commitments. Uh, we pray for those who uh, are still without jobs through no fault of their own. Uh, we pray for those who are on the verge of losing their homes and uh, who are frightened and uh, terribly sad and, uh, and uh, forlorn about the state of their lives. Lord, we, we know that, that history is full of the big lie or the big lies, the lies that tell us that we are no good, uh, the lies that tell us that we do not have a future, the lies that say uh, there's nowhere to go but down. Uh, the lies that tell us that uh, it is uh, preferable to have a divided house rather than a united one. Uh, the lies that tell us that uh, the future looks bleak and there's nothing we can do about it. The lies that say that humanity is of a different uh, uh, layering reality and that we're different and we should be, and some are better than others. We understand that the lie, uh, the lies have gone on through history to tell us that some are superior and some are not. Some deserve preferential treatment and others don't. 
uh, we've heard we've heard it all before, over and over and over, uh, century after century, and indeed that is true even on this day. But you offer you offer us not the big lie, but the big truth that we are all made in your image, and that we are made very good. So says your scriptures. We believe that uh, the big truth that we are all persons flawed, uh, some of us broken, and yet all of us uh, are offered the promise of redemption and healing and wholeness to get back up, up on our feet again. We, all of us, are offered the big truth from you that we are uh, treasures, that we are one of a kind, that there will never be again anyone just like us. You tell us the big truth that even though individuals can do mighty things together, we can do even more. We are greater than the sum of our parts. You give us the great and good truth that we are not alone, and you have demonstrated the big truth by sending Jesus, our Lord and King, to our planet, showing us in person that hope and redemption are possible. We bless you for it. We bless you for the big truth that goes on and on and on forever, stamped in assertion and in absolute uh, possibility by uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who defeated the biggest lie of all, and that is death. We bless you for his life, we bless you for his resurrected life, and we stand on it and lean on it, knowing that in his resurrection there is hope for us all. We pray it all in his name, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. morning is from the book of Matthew, second chapter, 1 through 18. May the words nourish our spirit, may, may the words nourish our bodies, as food nourishes our bodies. Amen. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem 
asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Harod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, and you Bethlehem in the land of Judah, Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen and its rising until it stopped over a place where the child was, where they saw the star had stopped. They were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening the, their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. And remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up and took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt. They remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in all of Bethlehem who were two years old or, young or, or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be consoled because they are no more. Who sends the reading? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. Uh, this is the time in the Christian calendar when we have a change of scene. We are told outsiders have come to Bethlehem from the far east. These are curious souls who have been scanning the night skies seemingly for a long time. And in their gazing, they are perplexed by a new sight. A new star appears in the western sky. Most, I suppose, would simply wonder at such an apparition. But as the Bible shows us so often, wonder must compel us to get off of our duffs and get moving. And they did just that. And eventually, they find themselves in the back and beyond of Bethlehem, of all places. And there, a child who they declare as king of a new age is before them. And these three, they bring curious gifts, only one making sense. They bring gold to this child, 
It is a gift that everyone at that time would consider a good and appropriate thing to offer. It's going to, that gold is going to get them to Egypt, this family, and maybe beyond. But the other two gifts must have caused a start. They are ominous offerings. Uh, only, only Larry House would understand these things. Frankincense and myrrh in the time of Jesus. Both of these serve, serve as embalming materials. Is that the gift you give to a little baby? Gold for the present day. Frankincense and myrrh for the future. You see, this child, in their mind, is born for suffering and death. And we see it in the very beginning of the story of Jesus. These idiosyncratic men, uh, none of them Jewish, by the way. Some say devotees of the occult. They know one thing, that someone with towering importance, a titan of human history, has arrived. Forget for a moment the stable, forget uh, the manger, forget the swaddling clothes, for a colossus has entered for the whole world, for every person, this is big. And these three outsiders, these weirdos, we call them wise men, because they know something that the insiders don't know. That Christ the Lord is born and this baby will grow up and turn the world upside down. 2,000 years later, here we are. These eccentrics followed a star and entered into the greatest story about to unfold. They kick it off in some ways. These insiders, including, the insiders, I should say, including Herod, the king of the area, of that, of that region, uh, this paranoid nutcase, famous, had a different view of the birth of the child. We have witnessed something of a parallel event just this week in Washington, D.C., at the Capitol building, of all places. Instead of wise men and women celebrating the dawn of a new chapter in our nation's history, others came east to the halls of power to desecrate and violate, and, and violate our capital, our seat of power, but not just that, our seat of hope as a people. The scene we witnessed has never happened in the history of our nation. I don't count the British Army uh, invading Washington as uh, the, other, uh, the other event. This has never happened to us before. Every and everyone played a part. Some were heroic, uh, others were cowards, uh, some were wise, others were fools and brigands. Even the president played a part. He chose to stoke the flames of hatred, bigotry, and nullification. He decided to play the part of a modern day Herod, a killjoy. The one who kills dreams, the, one who kills justice and does his best to hunt down and kill democracy itself, uh, our children. There's no place for Herods in our body politic. We all know that. What we witnessed, the treachery upon our capital, has left most of us sickened and shaken to our core, and we should be. To be sure, there will be ongoing investigations. Some will be brought to justice and will no doubt be thanking their white God that they weren't persons of color. Can you imagine? Because if they were, they would all be dead. Yes, if those we saw on television were black or brown or Latino or heaven help them, Muslim, can you imagine? There would be death and a river of blood in that sacred place. But these were white terrorists. And so we welcomed them in and escorted them out as unexpected guests. Yes, I said it. So in this environment, what can we do? Uh, I've been a minister 34 years. I've never given advice from the pulpit till now. Not once. Um, but in this case, 
if we see ourselves as wise men, wise men and women, what are we, what are we going to bring to move this story forward? I have a few things in mind. First, we need to work at and then discover and then tell the truth. In this environment, it's not so easy. We have uh, all sorts of news organizations. There's all, all sorts of places where we can get our news. But there is truth-telling to be found, but you've got to work at it. You've got to work at it. And uh, maybe a church is a good place to be, feel safe where you can work at it. I think that would be a good thing. I think the truth that we have to begin with is basic, and that, and that is that we are all born of God. We are all cherished by God and made in the very image of God. You've got to start there. What is a human being? And second, we need to speak out against oppression bigotry and violence not to speak makes us complicit I think we're learning that now not to speak it's and it's hard to speak out I think we feel uh, uh, far too open we're vulnerable it's no it's not an easy thing if uh, to speak out against bigotry and oppression but silence is not appropriate at this time third we need a safe place to air grievances these, these things that we saw in Washington, D.C., I think for many people that were there, uh, they have legitimate grievances uh, that need to be heard. Uh, people feel left out. They're scared. They feel like they're losing power. Whatever it happens to be, I think people need to be heard. Uh, even, if, even if what they're doing is appalling to me and maybe to us, these people still need to be heard. And that really, I think that really helps to move reconciliation forward, to take people seriously, uh, even if you don't share their views. In a democracy especially, we don't always get our way. And many times we must compromise to move a nation forward. In other words, we walk away from meetings and really nobody's happy. That's the way it works. It's okay not to be happy about decisions all the time. Finally, and this is a, a sweet spot for, I think, for a while, is let us be magnificent in word and deed. Let us be gracious to all as much as we're able. Let us be life-affirming and fair. And let us make it look easy, as my parents would say. Make it look easy though it certainly will not be. I'm sure you could add to this list or remove some items too. Uh, feel free to do so, but that's the best I could do this week. Following Christ uh, involves carrying a cross. Uh, following Christ involves carrying a cross and following in his way. And his way is love, it's forgiveness, it's fairness, it's reconciliation, uh, his way is standing with the poor, as we saw earlier in our, in our uh, le uh, liturgy, standing with the dispossessed and with those who have little power and no voice. That's just the way it is. This is who we're following. If we call ourselves Christians, this is who he is. Our Christ welcomes the outsider, gives hospitality to all, even those who are enemies of his, even those today who search the night sky looking for a colossus of grace, they're welcome too. The story tells us that they seek these three and they find and are called not clowns, but the wisest of persons. Let us do likewise. Let's bring to the Christ, let's bring to our faith the very best that we've got and try to follow the lights that we have such as they are, even though at first it might seem altogether uh, too eccentric to do so. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
you this day, O oh God, for you have given us another day to offer our own grace, our own powers, our own uh, wisdom uh, out into the world, but we need help to do it. We need your spirit to be in us and among us and through us so that your, uh, your plans, your vision for this world might come to fruition. We pray that it would be so. Amen. Now, um, today we're going to, I, th I thought it'd be a good idea to <coughs> sing America the Beautiful, uh, to kind of uh, have some sense of uh, unity today. It's 799 in the hymnal. <coughs> blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost be and remain with you always. Remember this. We're, it's epiphany. Uh, you can't, we can't come up with new ideas, new insights, when we've got our hands on somebody else's throat mm. or on ours. And so let's be calm. Let's be gracious. Let, let's give each of us and, our, and the people we encounter room, room, so that we can come up with something gracious, redemptive, and wise together. So go out in the world, do your best as God's representatives and all God's people said. Amen.
hey, Louise, I think we're going to have you do your announcement from back there, because you got these two big cats up here. <laughs> Is that the wrong thing to say? I mean, you could be a big cat, too. Yeah. Three big cats up here. Uh, welcome, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming to uh, worship this day. And for those of you uh, uh, online who have watched the service, uh, we greet you, too. Uh, it's, I think, just think it's a really important time to be in church and to worship and uh, get kind of reset uh, our uh, priorities and get a little light on this thing. Uh, it, you know, it's been a really, you know, frightening, crazy uh, week. And uh, so uh, I want to, as your pastor, bless you uh, for coming and for tuning in, so to speak, and, uh, and bless you also for the week ahead, you know. Uh, There'll be a lot of dust in the air, of course, for a while. And, uh, and uh, let's, let's pray for uh, uh, a little more peace and a little more sensitivity and uh, a little less reactive uh, that, that we've been. Uh, the, they tell us that good leadership is, uh, uh, involves a non-anxious presence. I don't know if I've always been uh, true to that. I've tried, but uh, that's that's hard to do when it's when it's uh, when things are on the line and things are scary. But I I ask that for myself and for all of us here at Lyle that we be a non-anxious presence as we go out into the world. Uh, and uh, I wish you well in that endeavor. Uh, again, welcome everyone. Uh, food for folks. Uh, you know, we've got this uh, new variant strain that probably will be coming down the Hudson River pretty soon. So uh, let's just keep at it uh, uh, as far as the food bank is concerned. Uh, people are in need. Uh, uh, Diane is doing a, just a great job uh, taking care of the needs of, of uh, the people in our community. And uh, really, if you drive around, there are certain days, aren't there, where you pass a church and there's, you know, a couple hundred cars with all their have you seen that? I've seen that a lot uh, since March, and it's, it's astonishing. Uh, but yes, people are really, uh, really needing basic stuff. Uh, and if you look at the cars, the cars, they're not all jalopies like one of mine, uh, but uh, you know, these are people who are middle class people who are really in need. So uh, uh, you can only, you can only uh, wonder what it's like if you're lower than that, scary stuff. So be generous. We've got a congregational meeting going on uh, January 24th after worship. That's when we uh, accept the budget, uh, which is talk about uh, an exercise in hope. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to, how to manage financially uh, for uh, 2021. So uh, you can pray for us too, as far as that goes. That would be much needed. And then stay in touch. If you, if you uh, aren't getting uh, in, any information from Lyle Church and you want to, uh, just give the church a call, give me a call, and we'll, we'll set you up to make sure you're not missing anything. I mean, one of the things we're trying to uh, achieve here is a lower level of isolation. And, uh, you know, we want people to feel connected as much as we can. We can't, we're not, it's not going to be the same as uh, pre-COVID. But we want to work on that. So uh, if, if you're not getting uh, uh, an email or anything like that from the church and you're wondering why, it's probably because we don't have uh, your updated information. So please, please uh, get in touch with us if you'd like to. And then also the daily bread. Uh, this is another thing that's kind of been percolating lately. People are home and they want a, they want a daily sense of inspiration uh, from the scriptures and a prayer. We have this thing called the daily bread. It's a daily devotional. We just give it to you and, and just come in and uh, steal one, never take one. And then uh, the donate button on the webpage, we've talked about that before, but gosh, we, uh, we certainly appreciate your generosity. I mean, it is incredible. Um, I mean, we're struggling like every other church, I imagine, but uh, you know, the lights are on, people are here. We're, we're doing the absolute best we can um, with the funds that we've got. And, uh, and uh, if you'd like to contribute to Lyle Church, you are uh, very welcome and it'd be most appreciated. Uh, that's all I have. Louise, you've got some interesting stuff to talk about. Uh, yes, uh, coming to you from the back room, uh, <laughs> your friendly 
uh, uh, flower girl. Anyway, um, this morning's dedication was for the church gave the flowers, the pretty flowers this morning in uh, memory of Elizabeth Lamont. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, plaque right above where Odom is sitting. Uh, she gave the money to uh, redo that the uh, front of the church, and uh, we, we remember her each year at the beginning of January. But I found a picture of her uh, this morning um, in a magazine, the YMC magazine. It's in the archives of a small uh, up to upstate city of McGraw, New York, which is outside of Cortland. I mean, I've actually been there because Brad's Aunt Lucille Clark lived there, so I think that's quite amazing. She had given the money for the library for that town. But I'll just read you a little excerpt by this Myra Smith who, who wrote about um, Elizabeth Lamont and Altamont. Uh, whenever I think of Miss Lamont's house, I invariably think first of our arriving there. Because my friends and I were working women and usually left New York in the late afternoon, we reached Millbrook, Millbrook after dark. Our anticipation quickened as the car, which had been sent to meet us, turned in at the gates of Altamont and began the winding ascent to the house. Just as it reached the top and the long level stretch to the front door, the lights over the entrance went on and we could see a slight figure silhouetted against the brighter interior. Miss Lamont was waiting to welcome us. Woman and girl, I took that trip at intervals for 30 years. I cannot remember an occasion when those initial moments of the visit varied. In a world of change, that little ritual of welcome came to symbolize to me an unchanging and heartwarming element in my life. It made my arrival seem like a homecoming. So Altamont was a refuge for many women, uh, many YWCA women from all over the world who came to rest there. And, um, and she was a very uh, generous lady. Her picture, she's a, a slight lady and she's smiling, looking down at her little spaniel sitting in a window sill. So uh, we remember her this day. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Louise. That's really great. Uh, you know, piggybacking off of that, you know, we're going uh, in the next several months, we're going to have a list of projects uh, that the church is in need of in terms of, we need a new roof, for instance. Uh, that's like 40 bucks. So if you have 40 bucks, we'll put a new roof on. It might be more than that. Uh, things like that. We, you know, we'd like to have air conditioning someday. I mean, we're going to have a we're going to have a list of uh, projects, great and medium and maybe small, that we would love for people to own uh, and help us with. And uh, we're working on all that uh, as far as that's concerned. Also, program program things. You know, if we would like to have uh, special speakers here on different topics, uh, if we could kind of endow that, that would be really cool. Uh, other churches do that. And uh, so from a, uh, a, person, per, a person's point of view and from a building point of view that we will, we will be able to move forward, Lyle will move forward uh, uh, beautifully in, into this uh, century. The other thing I want, I, I forgot, but I wanted to bring up is um, I've been thinking and other people have been thinking too about you know, what do we do when COVID's over? Uh, how do we get back together? Uh, are there things that we can do that are kind of special events where, uh, where we can reconnect with each other in a more normal way? We've talked about, uh, just to prime the pump, we've talked about like a big barbecue, uh, maybe for the congregation, but maybe for the Lyle family. We've talked about uh, having a concert, uh, uh, that I would be singing a lot of solos uh, that night, uh, and that'll bring them in. And um, things like a heroes, like I, I was thinking of like a heroes uh, Sunday. Uh, so people from the community, our, our people for, for sure, uh, people that have been on the front lines, uh, uh, Meals on Wheels people come to mind, uh, people that have uh, kept AA going uh, come to mind. And, but then people out also in the, uh, in the community, police officers, uh, firefighters, ambulance, you know, people, I think we need to acknowledge that, you know, we've gone through some great 
thing, some, uh, some trial, and to somehow work that, work that in. There are other things that have been talked about too, I can't remember any of them, but if you've got a good idea, uh, that would be ter just terrific. Uh, any way that we can get, get back together as a church, as a, as a Lyle family, and as a community, I think would just be wonderful. So that's what I've got on my plate. Anyone else? Odom, thank you. Well, Dan, thank you. Louise, thank you very much. And Louise and Brad uh, broke down the, uh, the church uh, uh, decoration, so many thanks for doing that. And uh, we'll see you uh, next Sunday, if not before, hopefully before. Okay? God bless you. <laughs>